My name is John Edward Heath. I'm an adaptive athlete, former United States Naval Academy coach, and former Marine. So I'm an athlete for the Adaptive Training Foundation down in Texas, and I'm part of a lot of nonprofits, but my full-time job is essentially training for the Paralympics 2024. This is home. So for someone like myself, I've lived all over the place. It's very funny when individuals ask you where you're from and you really don't have a place to tie in because I didn't really grow up in a, in a stable household of a foster kid. I grew up in Maryland, I grew up in DC, but I never really had a home. I left at 17, living in a recruiting station, you know, to, just to enlist. So when I came here, it was a whole different, it wasn't the staff sergeant, it wasn't the Marine, it was John who was establishing who he was gonna become after service. And I became Coach John. I became, you know, I became a big person to the local populace in Annapolis, which became something that I didn't think I could find outside of service, which was a family. John, <laughs> where to start? Carbon Fiber John, I mean, the name says it all. When I first met him, he came in, I was, I think, a freshman. None of us knew, like, who this big Samoan tatted up dude was with the, like, weird ass contraption around his leg, but. Um, immediately he kind of took over as a leader for us. He came in and he said, look, I don't know anything about football, but I just want to help. I want to do the, the best I can. And while he didn't know the technical pieces of it, he was a great mentor to them. And that has now blossomed throughout the Naval Academy. And there's a lot of midshipmen here who have, owe a lot of their success to John and the mentorship that he's provided them. You know, every time I come back on the yard, a lot of students see me and it's just super amazing to see the reactions and that just goes to show the impact that I had on whether it's their you know, midshipman career or post-commissioning career. John is uh, one of my best mentors throughout time. He's became more than that. He's definitely been a friend. have guided me along the way, whether that's my physical goals, uh, life things, um, and then leadership obviously as well. Any information or advice that he can give you? about what you're trying to do. He's always giving you a little tidbit or helping you out. He's empathetic, he's resilient, um, and he brings out the best in people, and I definitely saw that within myself. You know, I am always always have someone that I can, I can go to and, and talk to. He's always growing, he's always mentoring, he always wants to be the best he can be. He has grown just so much as a person. Same thing when I come to different shops around the city. It's just super amazing to feel that feeling, like people know that you're back in town, and you know, people see you and they just give you this warm feeling. So for me, this is home. I met John like two or three years ago. That was probably three years ago now at the gym in Annapolis. He was always that kid that was there from like, had to have been like 5 a.m. I would walk by, we used to have an office in the mall and I'd walk by around lunchtime and of course he's still in there working out. Um, and then I'd go at night sometimes, you know, 6, 7 p.m. at night and lo and behold, John is still in there working out. Um, you know, I always joked with him that he did, it was kind of social time for him and then he was working out a little bit as well. Uh, but he was always, you know, he was always walking around saying hi to everybody in the gym. One day to start talking to him, actually had an Annapolis ice cream shirt on and he came up to me and asked me about the ice cream stores. Um, and that day forward, we were like best friends. You know, that's, John just has that about himself. He has that, uh, that mantra or that, that aura about him that is just, you know, once you meet John, like you will forever be a, a friend of his. No matter where I'm living, no matter where I'm training, like this will forever be home for me because post-service, post-amputation, post-injury, the city really showed me my full potential and what it is to, to, to thrive post-service. Fortunately, through the world of social media, we were able to connect and we were able to serve as a place for him to work on things and kind of adjust to you know, his body and adjust to several different prosthetics depending on the type of activity that he's doing. And you know, our team here at Rehab to Perform has really just enjoyed working with him. John cares about the community. Um, he honestly cares about Annapolis. Uh, and you know, he cares about the Naval Academy which is a huge part of downtown Annapolis. He may not have been born in Annapolis, but you know, he'll always be uh, you know, Annapolitan, a true person that supports Annapolis, the community, the businesses, the midshipmen. And his success is not by how, it, how he does, but how the midshipmen do. So January 1st, 2016, I got hit by a drunk driver. I don't remember anything, I just remember waking up in the hospital, was told that I was hit by a car that you know, was a hit and run. To me, it didn't, it wasn't a setback. It was, you know, it happened, let's move forward. What happened, right, Marine mentality. Until my leg was not recovering. So one surgery turned to four, that turned to 10, that ended up turning up to 12, that ended up turning into my medical separation from the Marine Corps. I really didn't have any hate towards the situation until it was time for me to walk away and I didn't really know what I was going to do 
post-service, but luckily showed up to the Naval Academy, was hired as a coach, built an incredible bond here at the Academy with the midshipmen, you know, individuals that were stationed here. That's when the decision to have an amputation came about. And I mean, he made the decision to amputate his, his leg knowing what that was gonna do. To me, that would be a really hard decision. Um, he could have stopped doing all the physical activity he wanted and just kind of managed the pain for the rest of his life. He could have just said, yeah, no, I'm not going to be this involved. I'm not going to train. I'm not going to lift anymore. And just probably stayed the way he was. But he knew like that's not what he wanted. The difference that he wanted to make for other people required more. Having the support, the owner from Buddies, Kevin Blonder, his son was killed by a drunk driver. That day, that was June 5th, worst day obviously a parent could ever have. You know, I'm driving here to Buddy's to work, and I get a call, and your son is killed last night. What do you mean? Can't be any prouder as a parent from the, the stuff that he did in the 21 years. I mean, he was, a, he was a neat kid. He was a pain in the ass sometimes, but he was a hell of a good person. Had a big heart. Uh, 43 Marines came up from Camp Lejeune, which is unheard of. They said four to six at the absolute most. They had to get special permission. And then six people came from Camp Pendleton uh, for his services, and it was big. This whole entire restaurant was wall-to-wall -wall people. You could not move. You know, it was going to be two hours. ended up being four hours because there were so many people here. Then uh, they told stories about him, you know, from his hockey coaches and his lacrosse coach to uh, Marines that, you know, served with him or even a Marine that didn't know him but knew about him and, and just wanted to be here. I may not have known his son, but he's a Marine. One of my biggest regrets in life, honestly, was not going to the military. So he said, Dad, I'm gonna go in the military. Wasn't sure exactly what he was gonna do. And then in uh, 19, uh, 2019, he signed up for the Marines and couldn't be prouder. And then he graduated. He was the Iron Man in his uh, platoon. He became a machine gunner. They used the word badass. He was a badass. He was well above his age, well above his tenure uh, in the military and he just, he, you know, he joked around, I don't like it, Dad. He loved it. He absolutely loved it. He loved the brotherhood. Uh, and that's some of the things that make me happy. I will be representing the city of Annapolis. That's my end goal. And I felt there was a connection between representing the city of Annapolis and an actual Annapolitan local who grew up here, who's from here. His family has a huge tie to the city, who unfortunately passed away from a drunk driver being someone who was affected by a drunk driver, which is how I became an amputee, I just felt that the relatability was there. Having his story and my story travel just felt like the right thing to do. Just remember he was a good guy, he was a Marine, he cared about everybody. He loved, the day before, he had 18 days off. You know, he came back from Norway, had 18 days off, and he wanted to work. I was like, no, why do you want to work? He said, I love the people at Buddies. This was his second family. He loved the customers, he loved the staff. They were him, you know. He'd talk about it, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that, but once he did it, 100%. There was no turning back until it was done, and he did it, he did it the right way. Serve the country, be, be proud of what you do. I don't care what you do, just be the best that you can be. It doesn't matter, just give it your all. The end state for me is to reach my goal. Right now we're living in a time where everything's wishy-washy and you just don't really know what side you sit on and individuals don't really know whether they should pursue their goal. I think what's important for me has been the fact that I am thriving and defying impossible with my injury. Throughout everything he's gone through, everything he's dealt with, he stayed so consistently motivated and just refused to let circumstances dictate how he's gonna respond. His whole life he's been dealt a pretty bad hand and he's refused to let that dictate his, his forward action. John never takes a day off. John brings it every single day. And, and, and frankly, with the issues that he's had, his leg and, and all the different things, the surgeries, the, his upbeat attitude and the fact that he has such a great outlook on life is totally inspiring to me. I have had adversity since the first day that I, that I, I could remember. So now that I have this opportunity, I want kids to see this, you know, whether it's a 14 year old individual who gets amputated by an accident or someone who finds out they have cancer. There just, there isn't a stop to certain adversity. There is something after the hurdle that you jump. Really have not seen a moment in where he's had this uh, mindset where he's starting to feel sorry for himself or focusing too much on 
the past. I mean, he's done a really, really good job. People will get too wrapped up into things that have happened to them uh, instead of focusing on how even in negative events, it's an opportunity for us to grow. It's an opportunity for us to um, be a better version of ourselves. Like as an amputee, a lot of people are asking me, can I help you? Or they see me as someone who, who needs help. I'm, just because I'm disabled doesn't make me a, a victim or someone who stays at home and in the bed, no. I want the world to see that no matter what is thrown at you, if you have the, the physical ability to make it to some sort of competition, then do so. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It just, there needs to be an understanding that there is something outside the, the certain situation that you're feeling at the moment. Mental health has been my biggest thing. Everybody knows I lost my significant other in 2020. I lost my best friend who was the first lieutenant of the Marine Corps in 2018. He's just gone through obviously a, a tragedy and uh, an unexpected uh, circum set of circumstances and, and he's embraced seemingly every aspect of it. Thinking about all the things he can't do, he's thinking forward and thinking about all the things he's going to work towards and ideally end up doing. So to me, it's not just winning a gold medal and making it to the Olympics, it's the message behind what I'm doing. I can't do that alone. And as humans, we don't strive by ourselves. It's, it's, we strive in packs and in teams. That's the help that I need. I need help financially and, and support, moral support to get to where I wanna go. John is local, John is a Marine. John was at the academy, 100%, whatever he needs. We support our local people, we support our military, no matter what it is. So whatever he needs, we're here in conjunction with many other people in the city. We're proud of him and we want him to do as best he can and make us all proud, even though he already has. It's very expensive. Um, a leg alone, depending on what prosthetic it is, can cost up to thirty dollars to $40,000. I do have backing from the VA, but unfortunately there's not, there's, only so much the VA will cover for an individual. There's a lot of funding that I have to come up with. I'm paying roughly $1,500 in rehab, so cupping, dry needling, chiropractor, performance centers, and that's a month. Um, not to include lodging, drift, different training facilities. So essentially, the owner of Annapolis Ice Cream Company, Mark Cohen, he's always been my number one supporter. He's always called me his sponsored athlete, so we make jokes of, you know, the adaptive athlete being sponsored by ice cream, right? But everybody knows that's my weakness. So he always says he's sponsored by or fueled by ice cream. We haven't given him any monetary benefits yet, but you know, he cares enough about, you know, Annapolis, the community, the people in it. You know, he's going to be in the Paralympics, he's going to do great in the Paralympics, and, and I guarantee you, if we get him there, you know, we'll all reap the benefits of, you know, of Annapolis. And well, Mark and I thought of this idea of why not start a fundraiser. On March 25th, um, at Annapolis Ice Cream Company, at Always Ice Cream Company, either the one in Edgewater, or the one in Pasadena, um, or the one in West Annapolis, we're going to do a fundraiser for John, as well as the Fleet Reserve and Buddy's Crab House. Come out, you know, get dinner, get some ice cream, support a local kid. The money's going to go back to John. It's going to help him fund, you know, the Paralympics. He's going to Paris. Prosthetics are very expensive. Travel is very expensive. Hotels are very expensive. Um, he's given so much to Annapolis, so much to the Academy, um, so much for small businesses. So this is how we're going to give back to him. Um, so have dinner, get ice cream. The proceeds, part of the proceeds will go back to John to help support his journey, um, inspiring everybody around him.